Right now, the race to the White House heating up. Some big names in the 2024 presidential campaign in Wisconsin today. Also, a new technology coming to all Madison schools could prevent possible emergencies. Now, school officials say they plan to use it. And later, a daycare center closing up after serving the Cottage Grove area for 30 years. We'll have reaction from the community all ahead on News 3 Now at 6. Well, good evening. Thanks for joining us. We begin with campaign 2024 news with both political parties stopping by the Eau Claire area this afternoon for separate events. First up, Vice President Kamala Harris and a running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, holding a rally a day after Governor Walz was revealed to be the Harris pick for VP. For more on the Democrats' visit, we go live to Eau Claire now, where we find political reporter Will Keneally. Will? Yeah, Eric, this is uh, Harris's second visit to Wisconsin in a matter of weeks. Uh, she's in Milwaukee a couple weeks ago to introduce herself shortly after Biden had dropped out of the presidential race. Now she's partaking in a nationwide tour to introduce her VP pick, Go Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. Now, while she was here, she also talked up an economic message. Take a listen. Continue to bring manufacturing jobs back to America and back to communities like Eau Claire. So all this is to say, strengthening our economy and building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. Because you see, Coach Walls and I know when America's middle class is strong, America is strong. Now, she spoke here in Wisconsin to a crowd of around 11,000. Now, that's more than tripled the crowd that she got in Milwaukee, which had been Democrats' largest rally of the cycle to date. Now, she's continuing her tour with a stop tonight in Michigan. Reporting from Eau Claire, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. All right, Will, thank you. Now, the race between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump still appears to be a toss-up here in Wisconsin. That's according to the first Marquette Law School poll since Vice President Harris became the Democratic Party's presidential nominee. Among registered voters, Donald Trump still with a slight edge of support with 50% compared to 49% for the vice president. Well within the poll's 4.6% margin of error. That survey conducted between July 24th and August 1st, surveying 877 registered voters. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will appear on the November presidential ballot in Wisconsin. That's according to the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Under Wisconsin state law, candidates not affiliated with a party need at least 2,000 signatures from voters to get on the ballot in Wisconsin. Kennedy has gained ballot access in 13 additional states. Recent polling from the Marquette Law School shows Kennedy being favored by 8% of registered Wisconsin voters. Staying in Eau Claire, Vice President Harris and Governor Walls weren't the only high-profile political figures visiting. Republican Vice Presidential nominee J.D. Vance was also in the city for his own event. For more on what he had to say, let's head back up to Eau Claire where Brayden Ross is live. Brayden? Hi, Eric. Yeah, a lot of teardown happening here at the site where Kamala Harris held a rally that 11,000 people were hearing attended. Much less teardown happening over at where Vance held his rally. But earlier today, before even both of these things happened, we had an a bit of an interesting moment at the airport when both of these candidates land landed at the airport around the same time. J.D. Vance actually walked on the tarmac over to Air Force Two. Here's what he said about that moment. We landed about the same time that she did, and I went over there because I thought it might be nice to check out this plane that's going to be mine in a few months if we all take care of business, and I think we will. But mostly, actually, I want to go and say hello to the journalists who are traveling along with the vice president because I figured they must be lonely because Kamala Harris doesn't take any questions. Now that last part there, that's something Vance has been criticizing the Harris campaign hard for lately. Harris's events on this swing state tour are all scheduled to be rallies. She drew a very large crowd, like I said, here in Eau Claire today. But while Vance is following in Harris's footsteps, heading on a tour of his own to all the same states, his appearances are much smaller and more like press conferences where he's been taking questions from the media. At his event today, he took about a dozen questions, many from local media. He was prioritizing local media at the beginning of that press conference here today in Eau Claire. And of of course, he'll be following along on the rest of the stops on this campaign as well, on this tour as well, um, doing the same thing, answering questions and trying to compare himself to Kamala Harris, who is doing rallies where she's not answering questions from the media in the same way that he has been. So for reporting for now, reporting live in Eau Claire, Braden Ross, News 3 Now. All right, Braden, thank you. The weather word today, calm and quiet. Here's your first one forecast. Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex, beautiful evening.
It is a beautiful evening, and indeed that calm, quiet, relatively cool compared to where we've been at various points during the summer. 77 in Madison, 79 in Boscobel, 79 in Janesville, and 76 to the north. Up in the Dells, let's zoom on in here to Dane County and see if we can get a little bit closer. There we go, a lot of, a lot of 77s out there. That's really a nice temperature for this time of year. When you combine that with humidity levels, dew points of 56 degrees, that's dry, that's comfortable conditions that we're experiencing right now. Our patio forecast for the rest of the night tonight, temperatures going from the mid 70s down to the low 70s by the time we get to the middle evening hours. When you join us again at 10 o'clock, we'll be in the mid to upper 60s with temperatures getting pretty chilly tonight overall compared to some of these nights where we've been in the upper 60s to the lower or to middle 70s for muggy lows. Nothing like that tonight. We'll have a low of 59. Just look at how cool Friday and Saturday are going to be low 70s across the area. Isn't that a change uh, for southern Wisconsin? Then we'll start to work our way back up into the upper 70s to the lower to middle 80s. It'll be a dry stretch for a while coming up in Maine weather. I'll let you know which day next week is going to feature the best rain chances as it looks like right now. All right, Alex, thank you. The Madison Fire Department says spent fireworks may have been the cause of a garbage truck fire. A city truck driver was on his route when he saw smoke coming from the back of the truck. He pulled over, dialed 911, and attempted to put out the fire. Firefighters arrived and used water and foam to extinguish it. While removing the garbage from the truck, firefighters found used fireworks in the area where that fire started. You might be used to using facial recognition software and maybe unlock your phone, but starting this fall, if you're planning to visit schools in the Madison School District, expect a similar scan of your face and ID upon arrival. Our Maddie Himes joins us now with details. Maddie? Yeah, Eric, that new technology set to appear at the door of all MMSD schools is called Visitor Aware. It scans guest faces and cross-references their identity with FBI watch lists, sex offender registries, and other local data legal databases. So if you're a teacher, if you're a student, if you're a staff member at Madison Schools, with Visitor Aware, you'll know and can feel comfortable that any person, either a volunteer or a daily visitor that's entering the building, has been screened. Terry Swanson is the president and CEO of Single Wire Software, a Madison-based company that specializes in emergency response technology. But Visitor Aware adds a layer of emergency prevention. It's clearly a way to prevent potential issues at the door before someone even gets in the building. MMSD safety officials say aside from the identification features, the technology will allow schools to keep a head count in case of an emergency. Should there be an emergency, uh, we have a, a quick, accurate description of um, everybody who's in our building that's not a staff or a student so that we can account for individuals quickly um, and assess um, safety more accurately. MMSD Director of Cross Systems and Critical Response Gina Agulia says while it will replace paper and pencil sign-in sheets, it won't replace systems already in place for MMSD families. Even though those things are going to be cross-referenced, what we will be doing at our schools is working with families to, to pre-register uh, into our system. Agulia says funding for the system comes from the technology department, largely supported by a federal grant. The district will pay $177,000 over the next three years. Visitor Aware is just one component of a district safety and security plan modeled by recommendations from the Department of Justice's school safety framework. The system is already being used at more than 100 different schools nationwide. Those include Monona Grove, Wanakee, Oregon, and McFarland. Maddie, thank you. Today, more than 100 educators, parents, and organizations are embracing nature and science at the second annual Green and Healthy Schools Summit held on the ancestral Ho-Chunk land at Lakeview Elementary School. The summit features several sessions reflecting the theme, Embracing Nature, Connection, and Outdoor Learning for All. We know that being outdoors is good for all humans, but in particular, it's good for children. It's good for their learning, it's good for their health, it's good for their just overall well-being. Today's event included keynote speakers Dexter Patterson of the Birding Club of Wisconsin and Lakeview Elementary Principal Nu Bang Vu. Well, there's more ahead on News Screen Now at 6, including the end of an era. Coming up, we hear from the Cottage Grove community on the closure of a long-running daycare facility. Stick around. News 3 Now at 6. Brought to you by Ruger Law Offices.
We all share the same roads, but when an accident happens, we don't always share the same consequences. Gruber Law Offices has been winning for people injured in truck accidents for more than 35 years. One call, that's all. Win a hand pay jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Dodge Ram 2500 Laramie and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Baraboo Furniture and Mattress is celebrating Wisconsin's hot summer months with a huge hot summer sale. Save from 20 to 60% off every item store-wide. Over a million dollars of quality name brands on display in our beautiful new showroom, including Smith Brothers, Flex Steel, England, Ashley, Spring Air, Amish Furniture, and much more, all on sale. Get special free financing, all credit welcome. Hurry in today to the huge store-wide hot summer sale at Baraboo Furniture and Mattress, where your satisfaction is our guarantee. We've all seen these ads by Senator Baldwin attacking me. She's lying to you. But that's what career politicians do when they get in trouble. The truth? I was born and live in Wisconsin. I've never run a nursing home. And of course I believe seniors should vote. The false attacks are going to keep coming because she has nothing to run on. Her record has failed us on inflation, the border, and crime. I'm Eric of DI. I approve this message for this reason. It's time for change. Win a hand paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Dodge Ram 2500 Laramie and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Moving forward in your community, lending helping hands, spotlighting the people, telling the stories, warning you first. Your local news source for nearly 70 years. News 3 Now, moving forward. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. The state of Wisconsin, much like the U.S., is in a child care crisis, and daycares in the state are closing everywhere. Learning Ladder in Cottage Grove will be one of them, as it announced just this week that it will not be able to continue service beyond summer. Our Merrill Hubbard takes a closer look at what brought the center to this moment. This daycare facility has stood here since 1990, and in 1994, the Corona family bought into the business and has been running it for the past 30 years. That's 30 years of generational memories that will soon come to an end as they have to lock the learning ladder's doors for the last time. The learning ladder is about to get a lot quieter. This has always been a second home away from home for all of us. After decades of asking for change, the DPI, school district, and city regulations have backed daycares into a corner. We actually lose money on our, on our youngest age groups, uh, but we still have them because that's where the greatest need is. What they need is robust child care accounts funding, fair access to 4K funding and care, and consistent regulations across all child care providers. And there's simply nothing left to, to hold the rest of the business up, so that's kind of why we're closing. So when we heard the news, it was heartbreaking. It was like we're losing a family. Maggie Shower is a first-time mom who has seen her daughter flourish from six months to three years old. It's, it's been so wonderful. Like, we get there, and she's just full of energy and so happy. This purple home that has been full of laughs is now filled with tears. You know, if I'm on a, on a fire truck somewhere or at our annual festival, you know, I see all of our kids. He's very well known as Mr. Jason. About 25 people will not only lose their jobs, but also the memories that come with them. We love those people so much. Like I said, they're like our family. I mean, so far it doesn't feel real. It's just kind of... It feels like a funeral. The Learning Ladder's last day is August 23rd. And if you want to learn more about why this place has to close, you can read it on channel3000.com. Reporting in Cottage Grove, Merrill Hubbard, News 3 Now. And still ahead, controlling the emerald ash borer after the break with the DNR is saying about the pests and the way you can help stop the spread. And when can we expect to see some rain again? Alex is back, his complete forecast after the break. Earn a 
25 cent high V fuel saver for every $50 you spend this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's a 25 cent fuel saver for every $50 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at high V. I'm vice president of the National Border Patrol Council. America needs a commander in chief who's tough on illegal immigration. Kamala Harris fails that test. We're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the border as criminals. That's correct. That is correct. Kamala was Biden's border czar. She supported sanctuary cities and taxpayer benefits for illegal immigrants. And she created the worst border crisis in American history. Kamala Harris is dangerous. Preserve America PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Right now, we're running our 60-60-60 sale. So when you purchase your new concrete coating, you get a $60 Visa gift card, plus either 60% off installation or 60-month no interest financing. This is one of our best deals of the year. So visit our website or call the number for your new floor today. To everyone out there who loves Culver's, the feeling is mutual. Everything's made fresh. Everything. Everything. It's our pleasure. Oh, this is me and my happy place. <laughs> Culver's for any other restaurant. Culver's! Yay! We love our guests. Love. Love. As much as our guests love us. This has been my happy place. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome, Welcome to Delicious! delicious. Yeah. It's Empire Today's Half Price Sale. Get half price on select styles of fully installed carpet or flooring, plus pay no interest for 12 months. Schedule now. 800-588-2300 Empire Today. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. This is America's border czar, and she's failed us. Under Harris, over 10 million illegally here. A quarter of a million Americans dead from fentanyl. Brutal migrant crimes. And ISIS now here. Do you have any plans to visit the border? You haven't been to the border. And I haven't been to Europe. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand the point that you're making. Kamala Harris failed. Weak, dangerously liberal. Earn a 25 cent high V fuel saver for every $50 you spend this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's a 25 cent fuel saver for every $50 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at High V. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. The Emerald Ash Borer is now officially in every county in Wisconsin. Tenacious Shaw spoke to the Department of Natural Resources to get an update on the impact the insect could have on our state's ash trees. This is an emerald ash borer, better known as an EAB. This small bug has a huge impact on Wisconsin. So it's a common species both in city type areas, but also in woodland type areas across the entire state. The Department of Natural Resources says EABs have been found in all of the 72 counties throughout the state. They're known for destroying ash trees. If you're wondering if your tree is impacted, experts say woodpeckers and trees changing color are telltale signs. You generally would look for is the flecking or pecking away of the bark on the tree. And trees would take on a little bit more of a lighter appearance on the bark. We call it blonding or flecking, and that is really a telltale sign that EAB is in that tree and the tree is in decline as a result. The insects were first spotted in Wisconsin back in 2004. And it does that by disrupting the conductive tissues in the tree. Small larvae feed just underneath the bark and create um, galleries or feeding tunnels that prevent the movement of water up and down the tree. And over the course of several years after initial infestation, an individual tree will die from the, from the infestation. Paul Segan says ash trees are all over the state, including populated areas like Madison, Middleton, and Monona. According to the DNR, 90% of ash trees have been killed or are on the decline because of EAB. The Madison area has a heavy amount of impact from EAB at this point. So most trees that I've seen in that city show some sign of EAB infestation or have been killed at this point. That was Tanisha Shaw reporting. The DNR said the most common way the emerald ash borer moves around is through people transporting firewood. Well, another calm night ahead for us. Here's Alex. He's got the complete forecast. 
Eric, a beautiful night ahead, and I'm going to add to that cool weather expected as we head out towards the end of the week going into the weekend. 73 Friday, 73 Saturday, that's all we're going to do, and that's pushing nearly 10 degrees below normal. By the time we get to Sunday, though, we'll start approaching normal again, but it will be a cool weekend ahead with lows in the 50s and highs in the lower 70s. Well, we got upper 70s out there right now, 77 in Madison, 77 in Janesville, down to 75 in Monroe, down to 73 in Mineral Point, and a 79 to the west in the Wisconsin River Valley in Boscobel. Here in Dane County, it's the battle of the 77s and the 78s. There's one 79 in Edgerton and one up towards Sauk City and a 75 in southwestern Dane County. Right now, Madison, 77, as I just mentioned, but I bring this up here. Beautiful shot of the Capitol, but the dew point is 56 degrees. That's a dry dew point compared to where we've been. Middle 70s, sometimes upper 70s, when it had felt oppressive and tropical not too long ago. Pounding the night here in Madison will dip down into the 60s by the time you join us for our 10 o'clock newscast. You can leave the windows open. It'll be another refreshing night. Low temperatures right around 59. But I was mentioning that there were some shower chances in the forecast as we march into Thursday. Upper 50s to start the day. A few showers could be impacting Juneau and Adams counties as early as 9 o'clock, maybe Vernon and Richland County as well. The cold front moves into the rest of southern Wisconsin late morning, early afternoon, where we could briefly see a couple of showers, but not expecting widespread shower activity with this cold front. It's a pretty dry front. Winds in coming in out of the northwest behind that front later Thursday, and that's going to start ushering in those cooler temperatures. Here's where Friday and Saturday stick out here. Over the next 10 days, we'll be near 80 on Thursday. That's about our normal high temperature this time of year is upper 70s. Then we'll start to march our way back up to near 83 by the time we end next week. And that's going to be combined with increasing humidity. No rainfall, really, just that tiny chance on Thursday. Those chances, they'll start to inch back up as we go into early next week. The longer term pattern, though, is looking a bit more on the wet side, according to the Climate Prediction Center. Better chances for rain for the northern portion of the country. Perhaps what's called a ridge building in the southern part of the United States. That's just an area of high pressure where they don't get a lot of shower and storm activity. But on the peripheral of that ridge, that warm air, you get showers and thunderstorms around it. It's called the ring of fire. We may see that develop a little bit later next week. That's where we have the introduction of storm chances. I took Mondays out. It looks like it's going to hold off perhaps until Tuesday. Going on into Wednesday and beyond, storm chances slowly inching up. Best chance right now looking at Thursday of next week, but that could change a little bit because sometimes those storms around that ring of fire can be a little bit sneaky and difficult to track, but as we get a little bit closer, we'll be able to pinpoint better. And coming up in sports, watching and waiting their turn. While the Badgers say Dana Retke and Lauren Carlini are inspiration for them. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Melissa Ratcliffe, a working mom, is the only woman running for state senate in District 16. Republicans in the state senate are attacking abortion access. Melissa Ratcliffe will always defend reproductive freedom. Melissa Ratcliffe, a proven fighter for our rights. Earn now, spend later during Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Blaine's Bucks event. Now through August 11th, rewards members earn $10 in Blaine's Bucks for every $100 spent in store. Redeemable just like cash August 15th through the 28th. Start earning today on 40-pound bags of Blaine's Wild Bird Food, $16.99. Rewards members save an extra 2 bucks. Cadet dog treats, buy one, get one free for rewards members. Plus, get a free $5 gift card with every $50 pet purchase. Start earning Blaine's Bucks now to spend later at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. I'm Megan Tim, Director of Community Health at SSM Health. You may know us as healthcare providers, but we live here too. And as good neighbors, we know our community thrives when we take care of each other. That's why SSM Health and News 3 Now are sharing the keys to health. Watch for our expert information and advice on air, online, and at fun local events. Join SSM Health and News 3 Now, and together, we'll unlock a healthier community by taking time for kids. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. 
I'm the proud son of a single mom. My mom worked nice to provide for us. My mom worked 80 hours a week. But Eric Hovde thinks if you have a single mom, you're going to be poor or a drug addict? That is a direct path to a life of poverty. It leads to higher drug rates. That just shows Eric Hovde is ignorant. Come on, I'm successful today because of my mom. I learned my work ethic from my mom, my single mom. What is wrong with this guy? Phones were made to help us connect, and somehow they've made us less connected. Which is ironic, don't you think? We try to put our phones down, but we need to pick them up to see the menu. We can't watch something without also watching something else. Ironic. 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 But look, here's a phone company who wants you to use your phone less. That's ironic. Yeah, but in a good way. Let's find us again with Us Mode. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Traffic jam. Ugh. And I'm already late. Melissa Radcliffe works across the aisle to make positive things happen. Expanding broadband, making housing more affordable. Melissa Radcliffe knows that Wisconsinites need progress, not partisan bickering. Melissa Radcliffe. Common sense leadership. Proven results. Today was day one of two a days for Wisconsin Viable as they begin their quest to hang a couple more banners in the UW Fieldhouse. And it's been a busy couple weeks for Kelly Sheffield. Remember, he was just in Paris to watch Dana Retke and Lauren Carlini in the Olympics. But he wasn't the only one watching the former Badgers on the world stage. This year's team has kept a close eye on the UW duo and hope they can be in their shoes in 2028. Really inspiring to me because I've looked up to her ever since before I even committed to Wisconsin. She's a big reason why I came here and to see her living out her dreams is just adding fuel to my fire to feel like I played with her. I know what she did to do to get to the spot that she's at and I can do those things too. To be able to see people who have been in our jersey up there, it makes it very realistic for a lot of us just to be able to, to look towards that once we you know finish our college careers. The Packers kick off their preseason on Saturday when they travel to Cleveland to take on the Browns. And Jordan Love and most of the starters on both sides of the ball will play in the preseason opener. But Jordan Morgan won't. The franchise's first-round draft pick injured his shoulder on Tuesday and will be out for a week or so, according to Matt LaFleur. Meanwhile, at fall camp, Will Pauling has been named to the Bolitnikoff Award watch list, which is given to college football's most outstanding receiver. The Badger Jr. was Wisconsin's leading receiver last year, catching 74 passes for 837 yards and six touchdowns. And this season, he's stepping into a new role in that receiver room. I'd say leadership does come natural to me, but I feel like kind of being that vocal leader is kind of something I really need to take the next step on, especially with uh, just being that guy in the room that's kind of proven himself with what I did last year. I feel like a lot of guys are going to look up to me and just being that vocal leader, not just leading by example, is going to play a big, big part for us. And Tyler Wall is turning pro. The former Badger signed a one-year deal to play professionally in Croatia. Wall averaged 10 points and five rebounds in his final season at Wisconsin before playing in the summer league with his hometown team, the Minnesota Timberwolves. I thought he had two years of eligibility left. Wall, yeah. <laughs> right. Seems like he's been here a long two time. Two senior days. Yeah. All right, Alex, final check of the forecast. All good stuff to show in the seven to 10 day forecast. Temperatures in the 70s, yeah, almost cool Friday and Saturday. We'll inch back up humidity and rain chances by the end of next week. All right, thanks for joining us, folks. Have a great evening. We'll be back here tonight for News Now at 10.